Hello friends and neighbors, boys and girls, how's everybody doing out there today? I was asked by a student not too long ago, Jason, why don't you put out a video detailing all the steps that you need to take to syntax? Like, why don't you group them all in one place? And my answer to that was that I want people to go into the videos on my channel and I want them to just repeatedly view the stuff, study it, so that it gradually permeates their psyche, their formatory apparatus, and these rules and these things will become evident to them the more they syntax, the more experience they get uh, through watching the different videos, so on and so forth. Because if I just give you all the syntax guidelines like bang, 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 bang in a video, then that's just like spoon feeding and you're just going to remember those things by rote without actually having actually having performed them again and again and again and building a foundation of knowledge a solid foundation of knowledge with which to use so that you are confident with your knowledge level and the, the only thing that that takes is now space i mean time it takes a lot of time thousands of hours of studying to do this type of thing to gain the confidence that you need to have to step into those dangerous scenarios under duress, under pressure, in foreign vessels and dry dock or whatever else you're planning to do with this stuff. That was my answer. Well, guess what? I've decided to make a, a video, make it as brief as I can, and verbally go through the steps. Bang, 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 bang. Right in front of you, right here, collected in one video so that if it is your volition to be spoon-fed this is the video for you also remember what you put in is what you get out so I'm giving you this gift whatever you think this gift is worth you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and offer to make a donation gift to me in return for this or you can send a super chat, a uh, super sticker, become a channel member, whatever you want to do like that in order to participate with rule one, rule equal, and balance out whatever you think this is worth that I'm giving to you. Or you don't have to give anything. In which case, using this may not have the result that you think it will. Keep that in mind. This I'm, I'm not... Uh, saying it one way or the other, trying to, to push you one way or the other, I'm letting you know what my experience is with this stuff. What you put in is what you get out. That's the be-all, end-all of it. So here we go. Are you ready to learn some syntax? You ready to go through the steps? Because I'm going to go fast. So you see the sentence here. The beastly man of Rome heavily trod the dimly visible road. All right. Now, some folks will tell you, oh, you're going to go in and you're going to put one next to the the. All the thes are ones. That is not correct. Because if thes are always one, then how would you syntax this one? That's not a one. That's a the standing by itself, so that's a four. I did this in another video. The, the. That's not a one, one, is it? Hell no, that's not a one, one. That's a one, two. So on and so forth down the line. Those aren't three ones. Those aren't four ones. <sighs> Those aren't five ones. As you can see, the can be a pronoun, it can be a verb, or it can be an adverb. One thing it will not be is an adjective. So here we go with the steps. All right. First step that we would do is we would credential going backwards, because going backwards, as I've mentioned countless times, is the most efficient, 
accurate and effective way to syntax going backwards until you learn how to syntax like the back of your hand then you can start in the middle at the beginning the end wherever you are you can start uh, but for beginners and those that uh, aren't that familiar with it starting from the be uh, the end and working backwards is the best way to do it so we credential whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract i.e. fact-based or not based on a fact they're definitely not facts because they have not been positioned with position modal phrases. So that's why we say based on a fact, fact-based, or non-fact-based. Or as I prefer to say, tangible contract or non-tangible contract. And that concept, by the way, full credit goes to my tutor, colon raven hyphen farhad hyphen tohidi colon frn for introducing me to this concept uh, many years ago. So that's the first step is to credential whether the word road is tangible contract or non-tangible contract. Do you have a tangible contract with what a road is? Meaning, if I say, oh yeah, he's just up the road. You know what I mean when I say that? Up the road, the road is something you drive on. So it lends itself to tangibility. The way you would credential that though, is to look it up in an etymology dictionary to parse the word. So we go and we look it up. Road. Journey, hostile, incursion, Old English. From Proto-Indo-European, R-E-I-D-H, to ride. See, ride. Sit or be carried, float, sail. Ride. So... It's tangible contract, because I have a tangible contract with what it means to ride. So if you go to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word, and that's tangible, then you would in turn syntax the word as tangible. When you credential a word as being tangible contract, that means it's either going to be an adjective, a verb, or a pronoun. It will not be an adverb. Okay, you might want to write that down. Another little rule is that at the end of a sentence or a word group, the syntax value is either going to be a four or a two. It's either going to be a pronoun or a verb because a sentence or a word group would not end on a modifier because there's nothing left to modify at the end of the sentence. So it's either going to be a verb or a pronoun. Okay. So through process of elimination, we are syntaxing. So we've credentialed it as tangible contract. We've determined that it can either be a two or a four. It can't be an adverb or an adjective. All right. So it's either going to be a two or a four. And if we look at our syntax key, which you would have to have a syntax key on hand uh, to know what I'm talking about here, you would know what modifiers modify. So looking at the next word, visible, visible lends itself to tangibility as well. But in order to be sure of that, let's look that one up. Perceptible, see vision. From Proto-Indo-European root, to see. So that is a tangible contract. I have a tangible contract with what it means to see or see. So now we have two tangible contract words. Now, if you look at your syntax key, you will know that if you have two tangible contract words together, the first one's probably going to be an adjective and the next one's going to be a pronoun because adjectives modify other adjectives or pronouns. So now we know for sure that road is going to be a pronoun. Pronouns can either be tangible contract or non-tangible contract, just like verbs. So we know that's going to be adjective pronoun. So now we come upon this word, dim lee. So normally dim would be tangible contract. Just thinking about it off the top of my head. However, I see the ly there. So what I need to do now again is to parse it. 
So interestingly enough, dimly does not appear to be contained in the etymology dictionary. We see darkly, dark plus ly, so let's go to, okay, so first of all, let's check out what dim is. Uh, not seen clearly, uh, not bright, faintly luminous, dull, okay, cool. So we're going to have to go a little bit deeper and check out what Google says. Dimly comes from the adjective dim, whose root is the Old English dim, dark or obscure, from Germanic origins. And you see here, dim plus ly. So clearly, ly is a suffix added to dim. So therefore, when you see ly added to a tangible contract word, it kills the non it kills the tangibility of the word and makes it non-tangible it's the only suffix that does that so it kills the tangibility of the word so dimly would be syntaxed as non-tangible and i did a whole video on ly actually several videos on ly hopefully i will remember to leave a link to that up here somewhere so dimly is syntaxed as an adverb now we see our five syntax scenarios. Do you know the five syntax scenarios? I'll write them down here for you. So we have one, two. Let me put a comma here. One, two, three, four, four, one, three, four, four, one, two, and then one, three, four, in no particular order. Now, in the three, four scenario, you can have three, 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 four. You can have a bunch of threes in front of the four, but in one, two, you cannot have one, one, two. The reason being, and again, I've done videos on this, giving closure to this, a one, an adverb, is non-tangible. It's not a verb. It's an intangible concept. It's a wisp of a thing. It barely exists. So it can't modify other things. <laughs> I mean, itself. It cannot modify itself because by the time it's there, it's gone. But it can modify verbs and it can modify adjectives. And I'm going to show you uh, my copy of the syntax key. So here you see it's the syntax rules, uh, syntax key. So you see the adverb here modifies verbs or adjectives. And then you see here the adjective colors modifies pronouns or other adjectives okay so you definitely have to have the syntax key and have closure on what these parts of speech are the rules of modification so on and so forth okay so now get back to the syntax so now we've hit an adverb and once you can credential that you've hit an adverb you can take that away and start over. Um, as a learning tool, knowledge cultivation tool, uh, this is something you can do. You would syntax it as if the rest of it wasn't there. So now you have the, which is non-tangible contract. I don't have a contract, a tangible contract with the word the, the way that I do with the word road or the, or the word visible. All right. I know what it means when something's visible, but do I know what it means when something's the? I know what it means to uh, drive down a road, but I don't know what it means to drive down a the. Uh, even, you know, I know what a man is. I don't really know what a the is other than it's three letters on a piece of paper. There's no tangible contract with it. But again, in order to credential that, let's look it up. The. So here we see, first indicator that it is non-tangible contract, 
Proto-Indo-European root so, which means this, that. So it's giving closure to itself by using other non-tangible words. So the is non-tangible contract, just like this, that, so on and so forth. So the is non-tangible contract. So normally what some people would do is say, oh, we'll put a one there. But as I said, and as I've given closure to in previous videos, a one cannot modify a one doesn't happen there's no logic to it check out my video on the adverb for closure on that so what would it be then if it's not a one well look what it's preceded by it's preceded by trod trod to me seems to be tangible contract is it let's find out trod past tense of tread tread comes from Proto-Indo-European DER, which assumed base of roots meaning to run, walk, step. Run, walk, step. So it's saying assumed base of roots. Old English, so they're assuming there, so let's look at something more tangible like Old English tread in, to tread, step on, trample, traverse, pass over. There we go. There's our tangibility. A step or stepping, pressure with the foot. Pressure with the foot, tread. Early 13th century. All right. Tread, I have a tangible contract with what tread means. Again, juxtapose that with the. There is no tangible contract with the. So we have a tangible contract, trod. How about heavily? Is heavily tangible contract or non-tangible contract? Well, going by what we did with dimly, I would say heavy is tangible contract, but heavily probably isn't because ly is a poisonous suffix. But we have to credential it. We have to put the work in and make sure. Heavily, violently, intensely, <laughs> sorrowfully, sluggily. See heavy. All right, so when you look up heavy, um, it comes from Proto-European root to grasp. That's tangible contract, obviously. But heavily is heavy plus ly. And ly comes from this, which means body corpse, dead body corpse. That is why la, or I'm sorry, ly is such a poisonous suffix. It kills the tangibility of the word it's attached to, dead body. Get it? Good. So we have the, which is gonna be a pronoun. Because remember I said pronouns can either be tangible contract or non-tangible contract, just like verbs. However, and just like the rule that I gave for a tangible contract word, a tangible contract word is either gonna be an adjective, a verb, or a pronoun, it's never going to be an adverb. Non-tangible contract words are either going to be adverbs, verbs, or pronouns. Non-tangible contract words will never be adjectives. That's why the would never be an adjective, ever, 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 because it's non-tangible contract. Um, and I see people doing this all the time. So anyways, and here's another rule that I'm sure you've heard Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller say thousands of times. Nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence, i.e. this, or an adverb, this. So that falls under those rules as well. So we know that's correct. And then trod is going to be a tangible contract adjective. And then heavily, as we just shown, is a non-tangible contract adverb. So we have 134134. One, We've hit that adverb, now we can take that away. Now I see the beastly man of Rome. So Rome is a location, so that lends itself to tangibility. Again, we have to look it up to make sure. There's no guessing. Rome, capital of Italy. Yeah, I don't need to see anymore. 
It's tangible. It's a location. I know what it is. You know what I say. You know what I mean when I say Rome. When in Rome, all roads lead to Rome. So Rome is tangible. How about of? Is of tangible or non-tangible? To me, it lends itself to non-tangibility, the same as the. Again, we have to look it up. Away, away from, of, off. Okay, so it's giving non-tangible contract words as closure. Apo, away, that's no contract. Off, away. Uh, back to of. Old English of. Unstressed form of AEF. Away, away from. So, non-tangible contract. Not only is it a negative condition of state in this context, it's non-tangible contract. So, Rome is going to be tangible contract verb being modified by non-tangible contract adverb of. Now, you will, as you can see in the syntax scenarios there, you will never see a verb in the fiction, in a fictitious conveyance of grammar unless it's being preceded by an adverb, unless it's being modified by an adverb. You will never see a two by itself in a fictitious conveyance of grammar. A one must precede it. Okay? It's not the same thing for a pronoun, though. A pronoun can stand by itself or be colored by tangible contract adjective. So again, we've hit that of, we've hit that adverb, now we have the beastly man. Now some folks would say, oh, that would be a one, three, four, because you automatically put the one in front of the the. Or you put a one in front of the the, and then you see the L, Y, and beastly, and then you say, oh, that's a one, one, two. Not correct. What's the first step? We got to credential tangibility or non-tangibility. Man lends itself to tangibility. Is it, though? Look it up. So man is a featherless plantigrade biped mammal of the genus Homo. Human being. Hero. Lots of stuff being given here, but it's all tangible contract. I think you and I both know what a man is and his tangible contract. Now we have beastly, which... This dinosaur over here that uh, keeps spouting off is very beastly right now. Interfering in my video here. So let's look up beastly. So I know what a beast is. Okay. I have a tangible contract. But is L-Y being used as a suffix? Look it up. Brutish. Sensual. Debased. Beast plus L-Y. Bang. There we go. There's our continuance of the evidence. Beastly, non-tangible. And then the, which we already credentialed, is non-tangible. So, man is going to be a verb being modified by non-tangible contract adverb beastly. And then we have the pronoun the. Nothing can fall a pronoun except for a Breaking the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. All the syntax, rules, uh, techniques, mechanics, all in one video offered to you. Uh, my gift. There you go. What you put in is what you get out. Rule one, rule equal. You asked, I gave it to you. Those are all the rules of the syntax. All you need to know to be able to syntax a sentence. Now, I did not go into conjunctions and things like that. Uh, maybe I'll make uh, another syntax video like this one. I'll try and think of a cool title to separate it from the other syntax basics and stuff like that. And then I'll go into more things like, like uh, conjunctions and stuff and go into that because I don't want this to be too long. Matter of fact, that is what I'll do. That, that'll be 
my goal for my next video to to go into uh, conjunctions and other more complex syntax scenarios. In all seriousness, I mean, I've had some fun in this video for sure. Um, but in all seriousness, I hope this helps you out in your syntax journey. This is one of the main reasons why people contact me because they want to learn how to syntax. And I do provide workshops and courses for these things. Uh, if you want to get serious about it and learn it in a very regimented step-by-step -step basis. Uh, but this is for those people that um, just want everything in one place. This is pretty much it right here. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for joining me, and I'll work on getting the next part two to this video having to do with the conjunction and stuff like that. Try and get it out in the next month or so. Thank you. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like. And I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the Subscribe button. Hit the Like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.